to the outside. So take a look at the fake. And Hurd waiting and now coming off late with an unblocked man and DeBerg throwing the ball over his head. Dane Gash, number 30, and Felix Wright finally get him out of bounds right at the 50. Okoye. Just can't get anything done up front. They can't sustain their blocks. I think Irv Eatman's a little bit rusty coming back. I, I personally expected a lot more from him, but he's having real trouble on his side of the line of scrimmage sustaining his block, and he has the potential to be a truly great football player. There's a timeout, the two-minute warning here in Cleveland, where Kansas City, Cleveland, Ohio. Lamar Hunt, the owner of the Chiefs, on the left, and Art Modell on the right. They have more heat in the uh, homeowners' booth than they do with <laughs> the do. visitors. And uh, boy, there's been plenty of uh, warm action defensively on the field. It doesn't sound exciting when you say ten aside and two minutes to go, but the defense has really been something to enjoy. Well, you know, both those owners, by the way, are the two of the real pillars in the National Football League. The, the people committed to the league, committed to its success. Committed also, to the game. And, yeah, committed to the artistic end of the game. They have a feeling for the game. They're not mercenaries. Steve DeBerg at the Cleveland 49, trying to get in position for a Lowry field goal to win it. The Browns trying to get the ball back and give Pozar a chance, and it could be another offside. Perry again. Three down for DeBerg, and he's going long for Page. Well covered as Wright had him boxed in with Hanford. Excellent safety play by both teams. Wright was in great shape to come over and make a play there. But again, Perry jumped. I, I'd like to see DeBerg's head up close because it looks to me like he's rocking that helmet and pulling Perry off. And there's Felix Wright. We're talking about uh, Wright. Outside. Number 92, defense. And an inspiration for those who feel that down deep they're good enough, but no one else seems to think you are. Well, at Drake University, Felix Wright wasn't drafted. He taught school for a year, coached football, and they said, hey, you're still a good athlete. Why don't you give it a chance? He went to a Houston Oilers tryout camp with 400 other three agents, and he was one of three selected as the best, but they still didn't sign him. But he said, that was enough hope. I went to the Canadian League, learned uh, the trade, and here he is, one of the top players in the NFL. Okoye, flags are down. Matthews penetrated so quick and so hard that Hurt couldn't block him. He finally had to grab him. Now, does that hurt? Well, and they could even take the play because there was a loss of about three or four and also take away the down. This will be an interesting choice for Bud Carson. This really would. Do you want third down and about eight, or do you want second down and uh, 15? Well, the way they're playing defense, I'm, I'm not sure. They had the one. Holding. Now one fortunate away. pass, but they haven't been able to do a thing with their four receiver offense. On the right of the screen, you're going to see her reach out for Matthews and grab him right there. That's about all he can do. That really wasn't her. That was Jonathan Hayes as the tight end. 151 on the clock. Both teams have been bitten by the yellow flag. A lot of that 46 defense tight front to stop the run. Over the middle, no good. Intended for McNair, and Mark Harper made the play. And the thing about this defense, both teams in the secondary, the starters are so good that the men that come in to back up and come in as the fifth and sixth backs, people like Mark Harper are also, they'd be starters somewhere else. Sure would. They just do a great job of just tight man-to-man -man coverage using their ability and those skills they've taught them. Now with the incomplete pass and the penalties, no time ticking away. So if Cleveland could stop Kansas City here, they're going to get the ball back with timeouts and a chance to drive themselves. Lowry hoping that DeBert can come up with a big throw on third and 14. Well, DeBert's got to be careful here because an interception, just as we had at the end of the half, could mean the ball game. Got to be very careful with his throw. Very careful. Screen. Heard. Back inside with a blocker, but he can't get the first down. Tackled at the 45-yard line. That was a good call. They didn't take a big chance with a pass down the field. They picked up about nine on the play. Schottenheimer is going to call a timeout 
as, as soon as he can get as much time off that clock as he can. That's that this surprises, that surprises me that Schottenheimer has called time with 1.20 to go and fourth down. And now Cleveland doesn't have to use the timeout, and it would appear Cleveland's about to get the ball. I thought he was going to let the clock run down, use all of the, uh, the 45 seconds, then call a timeout with one second left on the clock and punt so that uh, Cleveland wouldn't have any time at all to try to move the ball. It looks as though he's going to go for it. He's going to go for it on fourth down from this spot on the field. Well, maybe that's just the difference of being four and six rather than uh, as the Browns are seven and three. But we've not as yet. Uh, we may see that punting team come on. Yeah, here they come. So he's changed his mind if indeed he was going to gamble. But I'm still surprised by the timeout that saved Cleveland at least 20 25 seconds. It did. And he didn't. He could have used more time. I guess is what we're what we're saying before he did that. Gerald McNeil back. 120 to go. Good burn. And he finally gets one with some distance and kicks it over the end line. So 20 yard line on the touchback for Cleveland and Bernie Kozar and the Browns offense with 70 seconds to go. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Cleveland Browns and the National Football League is prohibited. This game is the property of the National Football League. Cleveland Browns and Kansas City Chiefs all rights reserved. 10 10 at this point on the field either team has about equal opportunity to score down this close because all it would take would be an interception or a fumble something of that nature and Kansas City would have a field goal. And so either team has an equal opportunity to win here even with the fact that Cleveland has the ball 80 yards away 70 seconds to go two timeouts left for Kozar. Keep your eye on Webster Slaughter. He's on the near side. Nope, it's Manoa on a draw. And he's to the 29. It's well done. But now they're going to have to get going. Nine yards. Because we're under a minute already. Final minute of the game. 10-10 tie. Kozar launches one deep for Webster and the closest man is Kevin Ross but he was out of bounds. Well you're not seeing your typical prevent defense by Kansas City now they're up on the line of scrimmage and backing off into a zone but they are giving Cleveland a chance to go down the field with the ball. At this point you would like to think that the prevent defense would become a factor right in this area. Now on third and one. The Chiefs might be figuring Kozar is going to try to run for the first down, try to stack it up and uh, get another chance themselves. Well, they're spread out. You would think they'd hand off to make sure they get that one yard. Three wide receivers left. Manoa, the only running back. There's and a handoff. And they're ready for it. He didn't get to the 30. That's going to be short of a first down. Chris Martin made the tackle and shot number stops the clock with 37 seconds. Marty, you got the timeout. Oh, he got his timeout. But, but again, this is this is a team that's now been the playoffs. Frank became the head coach off those blocked punts. They don't get to Wagner and Worthen lets the ball bounce. It takes a Kansas City bounce and down by Oliphant at the 44 yard line. So oh. that's a couple of passes away from a field goal. One big play. One big pass. One timeout left for Kansas City. And they're going to have to use it if they complete the pass inbounds. Now with the Houston Oilers just a game behind Cleveland this so important for the Browns as they have that tenuous lead atop the Central Division and for Kansas City Marty Schottenheimer knows four games behind Denver that they're not going to win the West but he certainly didn't say it but you could see it in his eyes he feels a win here today would give his team figuring that they almost beat the first place team in the West Denver last week and they've given Cleveland now all they want the first place team in the central that a win today would give him a chance to think seriously wild card. Sure a, a win in this stadium this uh, great stadium with this great franchise 
would establish the Chiefs are here to stay. The Chiefs are a competitive team. The Berg goes downfield has a man open and out of bounds is Pete Manley at the Cleveland 39 yard line. Hanford Dixon was singled up with nothing underneath so the bird could throw that ball online to his receiver. There, was, there wasn't any line backing or anything else underneath it. You see on the outside of the screen you see that big comeback pattern with no help underneath. Consequently, DeBerg uh, De can throw an accurate ball there and not worry about a linebacker. Boy, what a use of time. Six seconds, 17 yards. And another pass like that, and Lowry will be well within range. 24 seconds to go. Safety blitz. Screen it out to McNair. He makes a nice move, and he's down to the Cleveland 28-yard line. Another first down, and timeout is called. And they're bringing people blitzing. Both teams are blitzing in these situations, which I guess is the new wave of defense. But what they did was leave a lot of people uh, without any way to pursue the ball. Now, you're, you're going to see uh, the ball thrown to the outside, but you're going to see blitzes coming up inside here and a receiver to the outside all by himself. Well led by DeBerg. Watch how he just floats it out in front of McNair. McNair does a fine job of running. But again, man-to-man -man coverage. Nobody on McNair. And people blitzing. 14 seconds to go. By our count, that's the last time out. Or do the Chiefs still have one? There's still one on the board, but uh, we have it as the last time out. So do you fool around with 14 seconds to go here, or you go for the field goal right now? Well, the only thing you could do would be to throw a quick so-called drag or quick pattern right to the sideline and have the receiver step out for another four or five yards to get closer. Wouldn't, Which is Cleveland, be, do. wouldn't Cleveland be looking for that? Uh, I would think so. Somebody's going to drag quickly right to the sideline and, and Steve is going to want to hit them. Either that or he's going over the top to try to make a big play. Safety blitz and he throws this one downfield and Emil Harry. The problem with that is had he caught the ball they wouldn't have had time to get the right. uh, field that goal unit on. So here comes Lowry with a game in the balance. Kansas City can win it if the veteran Lowry who has booted one from 41 yards here in the fourth quarter to tie can make this one from 46 or 45 yards. Let's see where they kneel down. Looks as if it'll be a 45 yard attempt as Pelour sets up right in front of the uprights. Well, off that last kick, he, he wouldn't make it. The last kick would have been short at 45 yards. And they're going to ice the kicker as Cleveland uses a timeout. And while they do, let's bring you up to date on the other score. So many so closely contested today as Bud Carson sweats it out on the near sideline. Cincinnati, not so close, bombing Detroit. Pittsburgh has beaten San Diego. Miami beats Dallas coming from behind. And New England has upset Buffalo. So Miami and Buffalo are now in a tie for first in the East. 31 29 the Chicago. Bears coming from behind against Tampa Bay struggling all day New Orleans beat Atlanta the Raiders have seen Houston score early on a moon touchdown to Duncan of 25 yards Green Bay and San Francisco getting into the scoring habit early now it's Nick Lowry ball will be spotted at the 35 a 45 yard kick for a win and Lowry thinking this one through. Sometimes that's dangerous for kickers. Into the dog pound. And apparently we will go into overtime. Four seconds left and Lowry misses to the right. A flag is down. Wait a minute. A flag is down. Oh. Offside. Oh, offside. And that's where Bill Walsh oh. coaches. I, I know how he feels. Oh. Where was the offside? Someone must have lined up offside. Where was it? It had to be a lineup offside. Somebody had to line up offsides? You 
certainly can't see anyone sure lean on. Uh, flagrant of any kind. You could, could, I couldn't see that myself. So it'll be a 40-yard attempt as Laurie gets a second chance. Last play of the game. And Kansas City will not win. It hooks to the left. One of the most accurate kickers in the league all time. He's second all time. Nick Lowry misses right. Gets a reprieve and hooks left. And the Browns are still alive as we go to overtime. You know, Bill, that's what I thought the first one. When he made the 41-yarder earlier, it looked as if that's what was going to happen. It would hook, but it died and stayed inside the upright. But this one had a Just healthy hook. An unenviable job, that of a kicker. Every time they're on there, there's that ball just getting almost picked up yellow paint as it went by outside the upright. Now, Marty Schottenheimer, we saw the despair last Sunday at home against Denver when Treadwell came on the final play of the game and won it for the Broncos. And now a chance, two chances to win in Cleveland, and Lowry unable to produce. Well, this is Kansas City team is different than the ones we've seen in the last few years. Because you can see where they are now, playing a fine Cleveland team. Did you like did you like to win the toss here in overtime? Well, it depends on the win. We we won the toss against Denver two years ago. They picked the win and we were bottled up and they finally beat us. So with, with a real severe win, you'd want to kick the ball. Well, the Browns want the football. We go to overtime. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. It's the Raiders, but for those watching us today, must have groaned along with those in Kansas City and Cincinnati when Lowry missed twice to keep Cleveland alive. Seattle and the Giants, you'll see that game at the conclusion of this overtime from Cleveland and the Browns a short week before they go Thanksgiving Day to meet these four gentlemen in Detroit. The NFL Live will be on at noon Thanksgiving Day. We hope you'll enjoy the holiday with NBC Sports. Looking forward to bringing you that game. Somehow the Lions often manage to get up even in losing years to make it tough on the opposition. That's their national game. Lowry kicks it off. Metcalf watches it go out of bounds. So Nick Lowry's in a slump. That Five yard hurts penalty. about as much as the missed field goal because That'll they get the ball in the 35 yard line. 35 indeed. Overtime records. All time. That really doesn't matter. In 89, the Browns have been in overtime once this year and they lost to uh, Miami 13 to 10. And that was in that middle of the season four game span where Bernie Kosar was in a slump. They averaged only 12 points a game. Since then, they've broken out. Starting with that Monday night win against the Bears, winning the last four in a row, being the Bears, Houston, Tampa Bay, and at Seattle, a big win last week, and now trying to make it five straight, brought back from the dead. Well, defenses now should start caving in just a little bit because these players are, whether they want to be or feel it, they're a little tired, a little late weary, and you can start making some offensive plays even against the best defenses. And you wonder about the emotional letdown now by the Chiefs after having the victory in their grasp. Metcalf spinning out of the grasp of the tackle to pick up eight yards. Dino Hackett finally secured him along with Kevin Porter. Hackett's played a great game. 15 minute sudden death overtime period. Do you uh, use a different strategy? Did you think differently when you got into overtime? Well, you, you've got to be a, not cautious, but just a touch conservative, especially in the middle of the field, because one miscue, and the other team gets the ball, just a field goal beats you right away. So it's obviously sudden death. So just be somewhat conservative when you decide who to throw to and when to throw to. Them. That's the key. Well, he just got that one off with one second on the clock. 
Kozar incomplete to Metcalf. Never had control. Well, it was a screen pass, and it was covered immediately. So Metcalf broke up inside. So it was a, sort of a tough play, a spontaneous play on his part. But again, Hackett was right there. And so was Mike Bell on Kozar. The veteran end was putting some pressure on the quarterback. Well, here go the receiver group. People like Hackett coming out of the game. Third down, two. Third down, two. Lawyer Tillman to the left. Slaughter to the bottom of your picture. Brennan in the slot. Here's a blitz again. The throw to the sidelines to Slaughter. He's got it in the first down. Tough catch by Webster Slaughter. He's got a half dozen today. Slaughter is one of the great clutch players in the game. He's on his he's, way to the Pro Bowl. Wouldn't you think the way yes, he's playing this year? Look at the coverage. Is right there. Lewis is a great player. And he's and that's a well-thrown ball, too. Kozar has a way of getting that ball sharply out to the outside. Among the better quarterbacks at doing that. So many good receivers in the league. It's tough to get that Pro Bowl nod, especially if, when the veterans get, basically get a little extra attention. But Slaughter's had that kind of season. First down at the 50. Two minutes into overtime. Metcalf runs into his own blocker. And that's the reason for that. He was being stuffed, I believe, by Derek Thomas. Let's see who that man was. 58, Derek Thomas. He is so tough on that open side. It's almost impossible to, to make something happen over. He can be blocked and get off the block. You, you'll see here, blocked. And now look at him, split people, come underneath and make a play. Of course, everybody else was there also, but but uh, he's Thomas a player. Is really a force. Being tackled by Manoa when he fought off Manoa and got the net game. On second down, Kozar into the flat. What a throw! Metcalf has it. Fell on his feet and out of bounds at the 36-yard line. What a throw by Bernie Kozar. Well, we knew Derek Thomas would be on Metcalf man to man, and he was right on his hip. But Kozar got that ball in there. And it's an excellent catch. Excellent catch. You're going to see him swing to the outside, and you're going to see at the same time Derek Thomas come right out with him down the sideline together, and Metcalf makes the play. You see him right there, right outside with him all the way, and he still makes the play. That just took a pinpoint throw by Kozar to make it work, and now the Browns are about a first down away from a field goal that could win it. Hanging on to the football, Metcalf. The first time this year he lost it on a fumble and nearly lost another right at the goal line on the Cleveland touchdown when he was diving in. Just did get the ball across the line. Veteran Matt Barr, he's been there many times and he's a good off field kicker. A real stress on a defense now. Obviously, the situation would dictate that, but also the fatigue factor begins to set in. They've been in these football uniforms for over four hours now. Second and eight. Metcalf gets away from Saliamua, but that was enough to force him wide, and the tackle made by Derek Thomas. Saliamua did it. He forced him deep, forced him outside the blocking lanes, and by that time, everybody would be there. Sally Amua is, there's no step backward for Moss. And Sally Amua takes that starting job. Derek Thomas with the speed to get to Metcalf and create a loss of a yard. Actually, two, so it's back to third and ten. Chiefs aren't cracking. Big play. Different than other Chiefs teams I've seen. Those are shovel pass. And Oliphant fumble oh. picked up by Lewis Cooper of the Kansas City Chiefs. And Cooper is out to the 35 yard line. So a team that had fumbled only four times all year, lowest in the league, has lost three today on this wintry Cleveland Sunday. And Bud Carson's team not only loses a chance at a long field goal, the Chiefs take over at the 34. Second. Uh, looks, 
looks like he's got he has it in his left hand and he's not protecting the ball. Neil Smith, I believe, is the man who got a hand in there to swat it away as Oliphant has his second fumble today. He's carrying the ball in that left hand. I don't think he's left-handed. And if so, he didn't have quite the control of it he needed. Again, Oliphant or Metcalf, you'd wonder. And Brian Brennan is the man injured for Cleveland. We're in overtime, 10:44 left in the period. Tied at 10. Boy, they've got to be celebrating in uh, Northwest Florida. To go, to go into Chicago like that, with Chicago feeling the, they wanted a certain amount of revenge for being upset early in the year, to come back and do that, that gives, again, uh, so often people are maligned. I think Ray Perkins has done an excellent job of bringing that, that organization together. And with Minnesota losing earlier tonight, Chicago a chance to move back into a tie for first in the Central. Back to business here in Cleveland, tied at 10. After Lewis Cooper recovers the fumble, Christian Okoye gets nothing again. No way that play's going to work. I'll tell you right now, everybody's moving toward it right with Okoye. When you see this kind of defense against Christian Okoye, you wonder how in the world he's leading the league. Well, they're going to have to find other ways to use him. They haven't run any trap plays at all. And maybe those kinds of things would help him out some. But this Cleveland defense, with four linemen coming up the field so hard, and those great linebackers, there isn't, they're not going to have a running game. Lights on here in Cleveland. We have not gotten the rain, thank goodness. It was predicted. DeBerg is wrapped up. That's a sack. Back at the 27, he was in control. And he may be hurt. And if he is, Kansas City has big problems. Because Steve Poulor was lost in the first half with a knee. Holding his hand. Big pass rush coming up outside. Bubba Baker. Eatman has not had a re great game. He, uh, Bollinger, who had been playing in the past, I think would have had a better game against someone like Bubba Baker. But Eatman has not had a good game, and he hasn't been playing. So he's rusty. And that's Hurdle. Third down, 16, and... Timeout call by DeBerg. This may be just to see if he's all in one piece as he goes to the sidelines. 9.42 left in overtime. Wouldn't it be great if suddenly you were in charge of the annual swimsuit issue, deciding things like how the models pose and who gets the cover? And wouldn't it be great if the models brought beer? Really great beer, like Keystone, the fresh cold filtered beer in a can that tastes like beer in a bottle because of Keystone's specially lined can. And wouldn't it be great if later that day you all went bowling? Introducing Keystone and Keystone Light, bottled beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? Performance, for some people, is a way of life. For them, there's speed stick antiperspirant. Nothing glides on dryer. Nothing protects you against wetness and odor in a bigger way. Speed stick, the white stick. Five minutes. Many men have sensitive skin that's irritated by shaving. After Aftershave Skin Conditioner is clinically proven to soothe and relieve razor-scraped skin. Sensible care for sensitive skin. After. Five minutes. The other scores, the finals of early games, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Miami winners, New England an upset winner, Philadelphia in the final two and a half minutes takes Minnesota, Tampa Bay dramatically, New Orleans win. We'll check the late scores after this play. Kansas City, third and long, 16 to go, and DeBerg appeared injured and went to the sidelines. Scrambles away from Baker. Tries to get to the yardsticks, but doesn't quite make it at the 42, but at least he gave his punting team some room and an injured quarterback hustling to try to get the first down. Punting team comes on, the late scores for you. Many of you tuning in to see these games. Uh, Burline has hit Mike Dial a touchdown to tie Houston at seven. The Giants have scored on a Sims to Howard Cross pass. 
Green Bay scored on a Naskowski pass and Montana to Craig 11 yards for San Francisco and uh, the Rams with a 14 nothing lead they got an interception return for a touchdown from Stewart. Well that that yardage by the Berg there will be most helpful in getting some kind of field position. Fourth and two and the best kick of the day a perfect spiral by Goodburn inside the eight is the ice cube. And he gets only to the 19 yard line. So that scramble by DeBerg and then Goodburn's 49 yard punt, best of the day, pins Cleveland beat. So Bernie Kozar goes after the Chiefs again. He was very close to getting them within range of Matt Barr, only to have Oliphant fumble it away for the second time today. The kind of thing at this point that could make a difference would be a reverse play. Because the defenses are tired, they're intense, and they're not going to recover quickly. But of course, on the back side of that reverse, you're looking at you're that looking hand at Derek, Austin. At, you're looking at Derek Thomas, and who, who knows? Michael Dean Perry has emerged as a solid force in that 4-3 defensive alignment of Bud Carson. Didn't play much for Marty Schottenheim. Metcalf. Knocked down in the backfield, Neil Smith penetrating, and then Metcalf running into his blockers, and Smith securing the stop for a loss of about five. That was just absolute penetration. You'd have to say Paul Farron was most likely the man blocking Smith, and something went awry because Smith was untouched. The only touchdowns. Neil Smith, the man you're watching now, picked up an Oliphant fumble early in the second half, went three yards for the Kansas City score. Metcalf, a one yard dive for Cleveland that capped a 48 yard march, and that was the march of the offenses of this afternoon. Those are deep in his own end, second and 15. And down he goes at the nine yard line. Leonard Griffin, number 98, who is emerging as another of the many fine defensive players for Kansas City. Well, Kansas City may not be a playoff team this year. We'll have to find out, but I'll tell you they're going to be a competitive team. And the people that follow that franchise uh, should take a lot of pride in this game, demonstrating how far they've come, how quickly they've come that far with this new coaching staff and Carl Peterson in the personnel area they're going to be a competitor first time really a serious competitor in a long time. Well they're really being measured the last two weeks Denver the top record in the EFC last week and they lose on a field goal in the final play and they've taken Cleveland on the Browns home field into overtime today and their defenses allowed just one touchdown and over three games the defense of the Browns who call timeout with 725 to go in overtime. You know as a, as a, a former coach Dick the, the, the statistic that's most noteworthy to me is they've only allowed one team to make 300 yards all season with the 49ers we would average around 400 yards a game they've averaged they've lived, given up one 300 yard game in 10 games and, and Cleveland won't get that today. We've gone past regulation time and Cleveland has made 230 yards. Christian Okoye who did not play last week and the Browns have made sure he didn't play much today. She. He got the ball but he didn't go very far. Christian appears to be a little chilled over there on the side. Again an error offensively can cost a game. So you have to account for that. Very Can't good. throw an interception. We're looking at 19 for a first down. Very careful throw here. Here Very comes Derek careful. Thomas. They go deep. And Tillman, they're trying to use the height of Tillman at 6'5 against the short defensive back, 5'9, Kevin Ross, but incomplete. And now Kansas City should get fairly decent field position as Brian Wagner comes in to punt, and he'll have to kick from near his own goal line. Well, Kevin, Ross, back. Kevin Ross timed his jump right with Tillman. Tillman went up, then Ross went right up underneath him to make the play on the ball. He didn't try to jump directly with Tillman. He couldn't have made it. Well, Wagner punting for the 11th time. I bet he's close to a Cleveland record. Kicks right from the goal line. Gets off a honey. Great punt. Worthen 
to his own 46. Oliphant with that speed gets to him in a hurry. What a kick by Wagner. Under pressure. Tremendous coverage. Oliphant does get down there. 44, 44 yards on the kick, and Oliphant making sure that Worthen went nowhere. Tonight on NBC, triple your fun. Magic World of Disney, the parent trap, Hawaiian honeymoon. And then, of course, the comedy Sister Kate and My Two Dads, good family programming. And then Raymond Burr, Perry Mason mystery movie, The Case of the All-Star Assassin, world premiere movie tonight on NBC. 7.07. A reminder that your flight just left Bill Walsh for San Francisco. <laughs> left in <laughs> overtime 46 yard line Kansas City had two chances in the final seconds but missed field goals from Lowry play action and incomplete to Hurd who was open bad throw that was their one chance to make the play they'd used that before for that big game coming out of their own end zone uh, this time same thing everything developed and Steve Devert missed his guy is my voice chattering, Dick? <laughs> my teeth chattering. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Gee. night is going to be quickly upon us here in Cleveland, Ohio, where it's about nine minutes before five o'clock in overtime. Seven minutes to go. That man, Nick Lowry, had his chances, couldn't deliver. Kansas City trying to give him another opportunity. The Berg play action and going deep for Manley. And Hanford Dixon had him well, well shielded. Well covered. I think DeBerg wanted to go to the other side of the field. And that was covered. So he came back this way. You talk about a courageous football player, Steve DeBerg, as the typical quarterbacks. But take a look. Look at this. Mm, Andrew Stewart. And look at him look up the field. I mean, that shows you how competitive the guy is. 35 years old. 13th year and well around the barn has Steve DeBert. Round showing blitz. Matthews coming. And it's caught for a first down by Stefan Page, and that's his first reception of the game, I believe. That was well timed. Well timed throw. Ross was all over him, but it was just well timed and a soft enough ball that Page could make a big catch on. It. Good pass protection. Line stunts up front. Now just a soft ball, Page could make a, a play on it. Frank Minifield unable to knock it away, and Page a top. Receiver for the Chiefs had a concussion last week against Denver. Has a over 270 career catches, gets his first today, and what a big one on third down and a first down with it at the Browns 40. McCoy flagged down. McCoy down as well for a loss. And it does appear the Kansas City offense today is much sharper without McCoy, better with a shorter, smaller, quicker backs. Well, they just can't dominate the edges of the defense because uh, the Browns' outside linebackers are too tough to handle. Bowling, number 53. Mike Webster. Of course, he's got his hands full up in the middle there. Yeah, you got to love Webster, though, and not just because he's been a brilliant player and he's got his spot reserved at Canton, Ohio, in the Hall of Fame. He said, gee, I like coming to Cleveland. The weather is cold. The sky is gray. I'll get my uniform dirty. There's a tradition here. The great coaches, the great players that have played. And so that, that really turns me on. You don't hear players say that much anymore. Well, he could name five or six games immediately that were played here, virtually every game he played here. Give us to McNair. Runs right into the teeth of that Browns defense. Short yardage on first down. Clay Matthews. And you talk about a man who still is young after a dozen years in the NFL. Clay, how about Clay Matthews at 33? They talk about Ozzie Newsom and Newsom saying maybe this is his last year. At least he's indicated that. Matthews and Newsom came in at the same time. You get no feeling that this man uh, is going to retire soon. He's playing great football. Those edges of that defense with Van Waiters or, or Grayson on one side and Matthews on the other. Mike Johnson in the middle. That's an excellent group of linebacker. Shotgun on second down, 16. Hand off to McNair. Read well by the defense. Picked up only a yard. Mark Harper 
coming up from a defensive back position to make the tackle. You thought of a tie game, Dick? Uh, when it's I was most just likely right now. Tough to look that one up, but it's been a long time since uh, we've had a tie game in the NFL. He had one against uh, the 49ers. Had one against Atlanta a few years ago. 10-10. That's what we've got today with 4.49 and time running out. They play just the 15 minute period of overtime. Third and long from the Cleveland 45. And unable to find an open man. DeBerg had to unload. He had someone breaking open by plenty, but Clarence Weathers had no chance as DeBerg had to get rid of him. Here comes Kelly Goodburn, and now. Time running down. There may be a chance each left in this overtime period. What's surprising to me is both teams are willing to go all out blitz on those third down situations when it could cost them. They're going right ahead and doing it. Good burn sends off another terrific kick. Very high. McNeil takes it inside the five. Very dangerous, and he's pulled down at the four. Oh, my. That was. Uh, I guess questionable or valiant effort, but a questionable decision. Well, inside the 10, the basic uh, rule is you let it go, but McNeil, who has returned some for scores, hoping to come up with a big play. Now he's pinned his team deep in its own end. 425 to go. You don't think these offensive coordinators on both clubs calling these plays are frustrated right now. They're looking they're just looking for groping for something that'll that'll be effective against these defenses. Here comes lawyer Tillman in with Bernie Kozar. You saw McNeil looking uh, those bright eyes of his at the action hoping he hasn't uh, put Kozar in too rough a spot. Manoa, the only man in the backfield with Kozar, who comes out in a shotgun. They'll be looking for the draw, and they get it from Manoa, and he's hit immediately. That seemed pretty obvious. Pretty obvious. Derek Thomas with another tackle. Well, Derek was unblocked. He jumped to the outside late, came up the field, and there wasn't anybody there to block him. They're trying to run a draw without anyone else in the backfield. There, there, there can't be enough blocking to deal with a number of men coming up the field in the pass rush. Well, the Kansas City Chiefs and some uh, party fans there would have known that the last tie overtime involved them last year. The throw to the sidelines for Lawyer Tillman. And he may have a first down. The Jets and the Chiefs tied at 17 last October. Joe Costanza, good job. Well, you know everything, Joe. How do you remember that stuff? Is the temperature dropping, Dick? Or <laughs> <laughs> it may indeed. It started just above freezing. And Tillman gives a, a Browns fan some hope and gives Bernie Kozar room. 47 left in overtime. For those of you uh, looking for the second half of our doubleheader, stay with us. Seattle and the Giants or the Raiders Houston to follow this overtime. Kozar trying to come up with some uh, last minute heroics. Picking away short stuff now. Uses Tillman, who had caught only three passes in this his rookie year prior to today. But he's gone for him. Uh, now twice today and uh, several other times it was his number called. Let's check on the other games, especially the late games. Still tied in Houston. Now in the second quarter, the Giants lead Seattle 7 0. Boy, the Rams big now. 21 0 against Phoenix, and the Packers lead the 49ers 14 7. On second down, the throw. That first down uh, pass apparently was not caught by Tillman. He trapped it. And Reggie Langhorn does catch this one, and we have an injured chief on the play. And it's Neil Smith holding his ankle. Smith, the man, he's played a solid game today that had the fumble recovery for a touchdown. The, the play prior to this, he was the difference in getting the heat on Kozar. 
field. He's building Smith as a number one draft last year, the second player picked in the draft. And with his speed and size, Smith's going to be a great player. And uh, after a rookie year that was uneven, he's really starting to play well. Let's hope this isn't serious. 337 left. It'll be third down and about two when we uh, go back to the next play. Well, both both clubs are getting just a step slow. I've said it, been saying it for about 15 minutes now, but they've got to tire at some point. Watch on the left hand side, number 90, Smith. He kind of caught the right leg as he was going after Kozar. It wasn't a blow to the leg, so it'd have to be sort of a strain. Looks like he'll be okay. You know, it went through my mind when I saw that replay was Tim Crumry. Remember how oh, yeah. he broke his leg in that your Super Bowl game without being hit because of just the body torque. Well, what the body's asked to do or is expected to do in these kinds of sports when you're responding to something else it's not rehearsed you're responding all kind of things can go wrong so Leonard Griffin 98 replacing Smith and now with 337 left Cleveland doesn't want to give up the ball on third down and a long one figuring they might not get it back well if they've got a play pass right here this is most likely the time to try it that can have the deep back. And he gets the call. And breaks through. And first down at the 31-yard line. Cherry and Ross made the tackle. And that's the kind of play that you can break for a long one. It was well blocked. It's one of the few times there's been an effectively, an effectively blocked run. And Metcalf's stamina shows up. Comes out. The no victory end. we saw earlier, Dick, against Houston. Metcalf at the end of the game was dominating the game at 175 pounds. Kozak, incomplete, trying to hit uh, Langhorn on the near side. Albert Lewis, the cover man. And uh, Neil Smith is back in the game for Kansas City. Good news for Chiefs fans. Well, he wants to play, I'll guarantee you. And has a touchdown of a fumble. One of the keys to the game in case you're joining us late no score until the final seconds of the first half when Matt Barr the Browns kicked the 40 yard field goal then Smith recovered the fumble for a touchdown three yards to start the second half and Metcalf dived in from one to give Cleveland a 10 7 lead Lowry tied it with a 41 yard field goal and then Lowry missed twice in the final seconds that could have won it underneath. To the 39 yard line is Langhorn, a good target from Elizabeth City State. Jethro Pugh and John Walton also out of that North Carolina institution. Third down and two and a half to three. With that clock at 2.37, we're looking at final chances now. Well, Kozar on this play, if he were ever to throw the ball, with a play fake, this would be the time to do it. So you'd be tempted maybe go for the whole word? Right here. Defense all pinched in looking for the run. And they get it with Metcalf. And look at the play by the Chiefs as diving in with Hackett to slow him up. And Albert Lewis finished it off. But it was Hackett who shot the gap and hit Metcalf in the backfield for the loss. And Kansas City apparently will get the last chance to win it. This is some of the best inside linebacking I've seen in a long time. Hackett throughout the day. Look at that driving hit. He's so decisive and he's scraping into the hole so aggressively that he's on top of things before he can be blocked. So the inside linebacking play of Hackett and of course of Thomas outside for Kansas City and we've seen great linebacking from Cleveland. It uh, it has been true to the score at 10 all the defenses have been outstanding and now a two minute timeout in overtime. That'll give us a chance to slowly let you absorb the other scores of the day. Uh, I don't know if we have any finals of the other late games but let's see <laughs> Cincinnati. 
42 to 7. We'll see the Lions licking their wounds on Thanksgiving Day. San Diego led most of the way. The Steelers came from behind to win at home. Miami rallied to beat Dallas and moves into a first place tie because Buffalo is upset by New England. The Eagles got a touchdown pass from Randall Cunningham in the final minutes to win, upsetting Minnesota. 32 31 Tampa Bay. They sweep uh, both games from the Bears. And New Orleans beat Atlanta. Almost blocked. Albert Lewis in there. And what a kick by Wagner. Worth and all the way back to his 10 yard line. And he is tackled at the 17. That was Blaylock, 84 down, or 24 downfield for Cleveland. And these kickers who had trouble early in the game really getting any distance have done their best booting late. Some great punts right at the end. Well, it, it, it's quite likely that Marty Schottenheimer is going to have to, on fourth down, go for something in his own territory and try to win it. Well, why not go for a tie? I'd go for a tie. I definitely would. I really would. In many ways, it's not. it wouldn't hurt Cleveland a tie, I don't think. How in Kansas that? City... It's a moral victory. Uh, darn right. They've, they've established the fact they can come into Cleveland, play on the road, play well. I'd hate to think they'd have to go for it and not make it. 57-yard kick by Wagner has pinned Kansas City deep. The bird underneath blocked at the line of scrimmage. I believe it was Bubba Baker. Al, who was in an auto accident midweek, someone asked if he was knocked unconscious. He said, how do I know? Most of the time when I'm not even in accidents, I don't know if I'm conscious or not. It, it might have put Bubba back on an even keel. <laughs> Look at the snowball comes flying in here from the dog pound. You know about that. Uh, there, there it is, is the right at the bird. Right. Well, we had that snowball game in Denver. So I hate, to, hate to think about that one. the backfield McNair breaks the tackle by Dixon and then gets out of bounds helped out to rudely by Clay Matthews be short of a first down well you know McNair really shows some quickness every time he does have a chance to get the ball but he has had very few chances everything he gets is breaking to the sideline he has nowhere to go but go out of bounds ball is spotted at the 24 Marty Schottenheimer, Bud Carson checking the clock, 136. If he can stop Kansas City here, he'll have a final desperation chance. But a first down for Kansas City might deny. Up the middle, complete to Emil Harry. And Harry is out to the 47-yard line. So Kansas City maintains control. A 23-yard play. That's three balls inside to Emil Harry during the day from that uh, inside slot spot against that nickel defense. There's a hole in there every time they play zone. Each team has one timeout, the overtime timeout. A lot of 110 to go. You saw Marty Schottenheimer say, hurry up to the sidelines to McNair. And he's into Cleveland territory at the 45-yard line. Fumbled the ball. Or was he down? He was down. Clock is running. Kansas City in a semi-hurry up as Nick Lowry with some uh, dark thoughts in his mind warming up. The Berg again to the sidelines, and it bobbles out of McNair's hands. A little low, and McNair will catch those, but that's a little tougher once it gets down below the knees. He'd have gotten some yardage there. That might have given them a chance. But the Berg's having to hurry his throw so quickly that they're not accurate throws. Third down and a yard. 35 seconds to go. Overtime in Cleveland. And trying to get within range of Nick Lowry. Lowry has some of the longest kicks in NFL history, but they were early in his career. He twice hit field goals from 58 yards. He does have his longest this year, 50, which would mean line of scrimmage around the 33. They're at the 45. The throw downfield is complete. And here's where they'll have to use their timeout as Clarence Weathers has it at the 35. They're not going to use the timeout. The snap, and he might get 
an offside penalty. It appeared that the Browns did not get back onside. 18 seconds on the clock. Clearly, the Browns weren't back quick, uh, quickly enough. There's a case where in the old days you could kind of lag back and chew up some time. Sure. But it's your obligation to get back onside. And uh, I believe it was Perry that was slow. And that five yards could be critical. It takes it from the 35 to the 30. And that means that Lowry's distance now would be from inside the 50-yard line. Now you'll see this man not getting there quickly enough. And DeBurk's sharp enough to see it. He's still coming forward. DeBerg knows he's there, right there, to just snap the ball. And he could have made it easily. He was it. almost walking as he got to the line of scrimmage. 18 seconds to go. DeBerg Full blitz. throws deep and incomplete. Really slippery down at that end of the field. Clarence Weathers was down. So Kansas City gambling on getting a bomb. And uh, Nick Lowry apparently is going to get another chance after he missed from 40 and 35 yards. They could have won it in the final seconds of regulation. At the moment, it would be a 47-yard field goal attempt, 12 seconds on the clock. And Kansas City still has the one timeout that they can use. Certainly keeping warm. Incomplete to Weathers, who was free. He would have gotten some good yardage. They had their chance. Weathers could have gotten to the sideline, I believe, and he could have gotten much closer. Well, seven seconds to go, and the pictures and the sounds. And Lowry's foot against ball will tell you whether this game belongs to Kansas City or whether these two teams go home with a share. piece of it but Nick Lowry goes home with a hat trick he had three chances to win and came up wide right came up wide left and very short this time and DeBerg who was injured you know that he was in pain the entire overtime when hit early in the overtime period but with no with the blur injured and uh, no one else able to play he was able to go through it Pelour's Spot was perfect. Lowry just scuffed it, didn't he? Didn't seem to get it all. So that's the struggle for a Marty Schottenheimer and this Kansas City team. So close again to victory, and the opportunities there unable to come up with the one big play. Now the final play from Kozak. He wings it deep. Intercepted by Albert Lewis, our Budweiser most valuable player, Gary Thomas of the Kansas City Chiefs. So tough to pick. You could pick any one of a number of Chiefs or Browns off the defensive side, but Gary Thomas, the man for Budweiser, the MVP. And we say goodbye from Cleveland, Ohio, where the Chiefs and the Browns have struggled defensively and battled indeed to a 10-all standoff. I'm brought